This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. Hotwire's Turbo provides a lot of awesome functionality to our Rails applications that allows us to create rich client-side interactions with very little JavaScript and with little effort as well. And with that, we have something called the Turbo Stream Actions. And these stream actions are just different kind of helpers that allow us to do DOM manipulations on the front end. And as a default, we're given a few different ones. We can append where we're adding something. And with each of the actions that were given by default, the append, before, prepend, remove, replace, and update, you can see the corresponding actions that these are performing, where we have the append, insert before, prepend, remove, replace with, and replace children. And so as a general requirement for a lot of our applications, this is going to cover quite a large gamut. However, there is some situations where we do need to add a little bit more functionality out of the box than what Turbo provides. And so in this episode, we're going to look at custom Turbo Stream actions, where we can basically create our own actions similar to a append or remove or replace. And the way this stuff works is really cool because essentially we're going to be able to run some JavaScript code from our Ruby backend. And that's not really fair to say because we're not going to be running the JavaScript code on the Ruby backend, but instead we're going to be using Turbo Streams on the Ruby backend to render a Turbo Stream element, which will then call a custom action and we can pass in whatever kind of parameters to that that we want. So as an example, if we go to our home page, you'll see that we got a toast. If we go to page one, we can see where we got two additional toasts. And on page two, it looks like nothing came through. However, if we look at our console, we did get a hello world from a Rails controller. And not only that, but we're also going to be able to broadcast these custom turbo stream actions. So we have a listener on the index page. And as we create a new user, we can see that the other browser got that toast message. And so in this episode, we're going to look at these couple of simple examples because there is just way too much that you can do with the custom actions, but I do want to show how you can set them up, implement them in your Rails application, and just what my preferred way of organizing them, just so we have a maintainable application in the long run. And so let's start with a very simple example. In the index view of our welcome controller index action, let's create a turbo stream with an action and we'll just call this action the toast and we'll give it a hello world message. And so saving that, it's not going to do anything right now because TurboStream has no idea of what this toast action is. It doesn't know how to interpret it or what to do with it. And so we do need to write a little bit of JavaScript here. So I'm going to create a new folder and in this folder, I'm just going to call it the turbo underscore streams because I want to keep all of these custom streams that I'm creating in a separate location in the JavaScripts, just so it's all kind of contained. And you can name spaces further if you need to. And I'm also going to create an index.js within this turbo streams so that in the application.js, all we have to do is import in that folder, turbo underscore streams, and then that's automatically going to look for that index.js file. We can now create the toast.js. And now that we have this toast.js within the turbo streams folder in the index.js, we can simply just do an import. And from the current directory, we'll just import in the toast. So we do need to import in the stream actions from hotwired and then turbo because we will have a stream actions and then we can set the function. So in this case, we want to have a toast and we can set this equal to a function and this function 
we need to get the message and then we want to make it a toast. So we can set a constant for our message is equal to this dot get attribute and we want to get the message attribute. And so we do need a toast library. So I'm going to do a yarn add toastify dash JS, which is a pretty popular and maintained toast library. And it also has a lot of options. So we can go ahead and import that into here as well. We can import toastify from the toastify JS. And then we can call toastify and pass in a bunch of options. The text that we want to display is our message constant. We can set a duration. The duration, let's just set it for three seconds. So we'll set it to 3000 milliseconds. If we need a destination, so something that they can click on to take them to a certain page, then we can do that as well. But I'm just going to leave that blank. We do want this to be dismissible. We can set a gravity and the gravity is where do we want it? And we want it at the top instead of the bottom. The position will set it equal to the left hand side of our screen. And then we can do a stop on focus, which basically means if we are hovering over the toast, then we don't want it to dismiss because the user is probably trying to read it a bit more carefully. We can add some custom styling. In this case, I just pasted in some background styling. And then at the end, we can call dot show toast. And so this is all we have to do to create a custom turbo stream action. However, because we are using a JavaScript library, which does have some CSS assets, I'm going to import these in with a use, and then the toastify dash JS, the source, and then the toastify dot CSS. And that way the toast will show up appropriately. So we can come to our Rails application, we can refresh the page, or we could just visit the homepage and then we see our toast notification. And so this is a really simple example of how we create the JavaScript side of the custom TurboStream actions. However, we can also apply this on the back end so we can use it within our Rails application to either broadcast these notifications or these custom TurboStream actions, or we can also render a response if we are doing something on the front end, which is already doing the markup or the DOM manipulation, either via stimulus controller or something else. But then we also want to have a toast notification pop up if that record saves successfully, if we're doing something like a calendar events. So the calendar events where you're dragging and dropping events is automatically going to update the UI. However, we don't know if that record saved. And so instead of just rendering a head OK on the event save, we could just render a toast notification with the custom TurboStream actions. And so in order to do this, we do need to have some way to tell the TurboStreams that there is this additional action on the client side. And so the easiest way to do this is to just have a helper. So I'm going to do a Rails generate helper. And again, similar to what we did for the JavaScript side, namespacing it under turbo streams, I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to have a turbo streams and then we'll have our toast. This will create a new folder called turbo streams under the app helpers so we can use it in our views. And then we have our toast helper. Within this toast helper, we need to have just one method and it is going to be our toast and we'll take in our message. We could also take in some additional parameters like a position and maybe we want to default it to the left. We can then call a turbo stream action tag, which will create this turbo stream tag. We then need to give it the action, which in our case is a toast. And then we can pass in the message just like we did before. And we can also pass in the position. And now that we have a position, we can go back to our toast. We can also get our position, which we'll just set it as a constant as well. And then we would specify that position here. And so once we have our toast helper, we can then call the turbo colon colon streams colon colon tag builder. And we want to prepend this module. And so just by doing this, we're then going to be able to use the toast on our turbo stream. And we can send that right from a Rails controller. So let's add a couple of additional pages. We'll just have a page one and a page two in our welcome controller. And we can create these actions with the page one and our page two. And so for the page one, let's do a render and then a turbo underscore stream. 
and we could do a turbo underscore stream dot toast. We can pass in our message and then we can set the position and we'll set it to the right. And maybe we want to do something similar for the second page and we'll just say hello from page two and let's make this on the left. So coming back to our Rails application, I'll refresh the page. I've added in links to the page one and page two. So now if we click on page one, we get the render hello from a Rails controller. And if we click on page two, we get the hello from page two. And one cool thing that you may not have known about turbo streams and the way the render function works is that we could actually pass in this as an array. So if we wanted to have multiple toasts or if we wanted to do multiple custom turbo stream actions, we would be able to do that. So to demo this, we'll have two different toasts, one on the left and one on the right whenever we visit page two. So now if we go to page one, we get our first toast and on page two, now we get both toasts. And so let's create another custom action and we're just gonna call this log. And with this log helper, it is going to act very similar to what we had in the toast helper. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it down and we'll just replace the relevant bits. But we do need to change this toast to a log and we're not going to need a position on here. So I'll clean that up as well. And the custom action, we're going to make a log. And so now we have the rail side set up but now we need to set up the JavaScript side. So I'll come under the index action within the turbo streams folder. We'll import in the log. We'll need to create that. I'll just copy the toast, rename it to log, and then we'll clean it up. And then we can change the action to a log. And so this would basically be the boilerplate code that you need for a new action. And here we'll just do a console.log of our message. And so this way, whenever we send a log, that's going to take it from our Rails backend or wherever, and then do a JavaScript log. So I can add in another option here for the TurboStream log, as well as our toasts. We can pull up our dev console. And so now whenever we click on page two, we got our two toast notifications and we got the log from page two. And so now let's generate a scaffold and we'll just create a user's model with a name and an email. And so within this model, we are going to need to include a few different things just so we are able to use the helpers that are available to us. So we do need the turbo streams and then the action helper. And we also need to include the turbo streams and then the stream name. And this just make it a bit easier to get the stream name that we're going to be broadcasting to. So whenever we do a broadcast, whether you want to do it on an update or on a create or whatever, we could do something like an after underscore create. We can create a Lambda function here. And then we can set our content is equal to the turbo stream action tag. And we want this to be our toast with a message that a new user was created. We then call the action cable server broadcast. And we want to broadcast this to some stream. So, Typically, if you have an updated record, you can broadcast to self. And if someone is listening to that user record or streaming from that user record, then they would receive it. But because this is really coming more from an index action, or maybe you have some other kind of stream that you want to broadcast to, I'm just going to broadcast to the stream users and we'll broadcast that content. And we are able to wrap this users in a stream name from but in this case, it really doesn't matter too much. And so on the user's index view, we could do a turbo stream from, and we could just stream from the users. So now whenever a new user is created, we are streaming on the index view. So if someone else is on that index view, then they will get a toast notification that a new user was added. And so we can test this out with two different browsers open. We have a new user, we'll create it, and then we got that toast notification. And so this isn't perhaps the best example of broadcasting a notification, but I just wanted to illustrate that it is possible and how you would approach it. And I actually have quite a few episodes on broadcasting. So we could do a code colon broadcast within the search on Drift and Ruby. And that's going to do a search on all these show notes codes. So if you're looking for a particular thing, like a turbo stream from, you can find any episode that has that in the show notes. So I do have quite a few episodes covering the broadcasting. So definitely check those out if you want to learn more about that. 
And if you want to look at a great library that has a lot of different custom actions already built, have a look at Turbo Power. This might give you some inspiration of different kind of turbo stream actions that you can create and the different things that you can do with it. And overall, I think the custom turbo stream actions is a great thing to know how to do because it's going to be one of those things where you don't use it very often, but when you do need it, because the defaults provided don't quite do what we want, then this is a great option and a great tool to have. I would be cautious not to overuse it. As with anything in any framework, overusing it will lead to complications especially when trying to debug stuff that's not working properly, but definitely sprinkle it in where it makes sense and where it saves you a lot of time and effort. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.